Not just networking, but building like what social fabric, right? So we believe that these things help build infrastructure. So when we can call people together in about an hour, we'll have 20 people show up. But a lot of that is about how we visit our neighbors, how we also invest in the good and the well being of what people are already doing. So capacity building for us isn't just the idea we fit a program in, but friendships and celebrations are those ways that we build capacity. So all the people in this room that live in this neighborhood contribute um, at a higher rate than most people, but it is invisible. To our neighbors, uh, Leslie, Damon, and uh, January, which talents did y'all uh, put on display today for this event? I wrote this song and um, I just put the music to it. It just came together. It was like yeah. it was supposed to be born. <laughs> of open fight night, but culinary arts was something that was dear to us because that's where we came from. Our first claim to fame was we started catering uh, fine dining experiences, and um, we knew kind of the steps that it took to get us to that. And so not only was open fight night meant to be a platform for up and coming cooks, uh, aspiring chefs, aspiring restaurateurs, it was also kind of like a mentoring program. We knew the licensing we had to go through, we knew the steps that we had to go through, we wanted to kind of train and teach people that might not have that opportunity or might not have that information. We had the police come out and the first thing they did was kind of shrink back from us. Like, no, we're not here for that, we're here because we saw a situation in a neighborhood that's normally, you know, when we respond to a situation, it's normally for violence, it's normally to do something. This gives us a, a reason. We feel like we're here to protect something. And they kind of joined in and they kind of partied with us and had some food and you know, it was, a, it was a good night. We repeated the process by demand a few months later and it was held was down on uh, Roche and Burton and we partnered with the Learning Tree and uh, we blocked off the street, had stages, and we had about 1,100 people. I have an event that honors women. The first year it was called the Queen Bee Legendary Ladies Ball. My sister friend Queen Bee passed away from a stroke, so uh, that's the first and foremost goal is to raise stroke awareness and to uh, keep her name alive and to honor her. Honor a handful of women uh, who are almost like the unsung heroes of our community. It's about giving live roses, giving people their roses while they're here and awake and alert and involved to receive them and appreciate them. I do an event called Claim the Throne, 
we honor 30 men in the community who are kind of unsung heroes, 30 men who are in social justice, 30 men who are in community activism, 30 men who are in youth work. And the final one was called the William G. Ryder Award for Community Achievement. Um, William Ryder is a neighbor of ours who lived down the street if you were at 34th and Clifton. The big asphalt sculpture in the yard that's an African mask that was done by a man named William Ryder. And what he does is he takes salvaged materials from any waste any any waste and he builds them into sculptures, he builds them into artwork. And he's just been such an instrumental part and um, we all kind of aspire to be the legacy that he lived. Um, he, he's just an amazing man and he currently lives with his son and we were happy to present Diamond with the William P. Ryder Community Achievement Award and this is the fact. Honestly, when people see things from the outside, they only see the need. Saying the help that we all understand that we need it's only help if you understand why we need it. Right. Right. Like they come in with a program or something for six weeks or for right. a month or a survey uh -huh. or something, and then you're gone for good. Yeah. <laughs> and we're still here. We still live here. And right. We still need what we need and and require what we require. Yeah. So when we have events like the ball or claim a throne or. Um, open bite or even these living room sessions these things are continuous right open yeah. bite is already scheduled to go again and again and again for, for organizations that are looking to do work in this neighborhood maybe actually survey the neighborhood not post one announcement on some random website that says hey we're having a community meeting <laughs> right. but actually come out and say hey are you interested in participating not in this not yeah, we purposely do this in the homes of people because these are the hosts in our neighborhood. These are the people we go to when trouble call goes on. This is what happens after midnight, after all the programs close down. These are the people that gather together and help us and save us. Uh, I run a foundation and I always feel like I have the right intentions, but I don't always have the right answers and I don't always have the right connections. And I feel like tonight I'm joyous because I learned a lot about who the right connections are and uh, where, the, where the wisdom lies. So thank you, Lady. I'm going to have to think about this for a while because I am really overcome with the hope and joy that you have expressed tonight and the faith in yourselves and each other, in your intelligence and um, really expertise about how to address some of the problems in your community. And this work is 17 years of practice, cultivating structures that are built for human capacity. With the main ingredient is friendships. Thank you all. Thank you friends. Thank you neighbors. Come again. Yeah.